Good morning. <laughs> Wherever you are, welcome to Cichlids and Coffee. Hope you're having a cup of coffee and um, or tea or whatever your beverage of choice is. And uh, if I can get a quick uh, sound and video check, I'm pretty sure it's okay, but always good to know for sure. And welcome everybody. See, we have a pretty good, pretty good crowd already in the house. <clears throat> Let me see here. Looks like Peas and Haps Forever was first from Manitoba, Canada. Uh, Peas and Haps, if you already have some stickers, don't bother. But if you would like some channel stickers uh, for being first on the chat, and you can see some of them here. And I have a whole pack now. I've got including the including the new uh, the little Garage Gang sticker that's on my T-shirt here. That's from the uh, Patreon membership. But if you'd like a, uh, a set of five different stickers, including the uh, Sickle Jack sticker, uh, let me know. Just send me, send me an email to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. Just say you were first on the chat, and I'll get you a set of stickers. <clears throat> so welcome. And hey, GP, good to see you here. One of my moderators. Luis Blanco, good morning to you. Vizak is here from Sweden. Hello, Vizak. And uh, my son had a great time in Sweden a few summers ago. They won the national championship, national championship in men's baseball. And uh, great time in Sweden. They were the Lumberjacks. You can look them up. The L L Luckstrom Lumberjacks. Lagstrom, I forget. I don't know how to pronounce the... Anything in Swedish. All right, Cat Sailor, good morning to you. And Mary Page Flynn is hi, Ben, and every happy Saturday to you, Mary Page. And uh, Cat Sailor is mentioning the tornadoes last night at around uh, 02 in the morning. We had a, uh, if I look a little tired, <laughs> I was up from about 2 a.m. to about 4. Uh, they wanted us all in the uh, safest center uh, of the house, and so we all had to move there. And the winds were very frightening, uh, very high winds, strong rain, and a tornado uh, tornado warning, uh, go figure. Uh, I knew something was weird when um, I went out in the evening around 8 or 9 p.m. It was around 72 degrees, uh, very strange for this time of year. And uh, so I knew something was off, something was odd. And then we got this tornado um, warning. And it was scary, but it did pass, and I was able to go back to sleep. And... Uh, I was running a few minutes behind this morning, but uh, I did sleep in a little bit, had to catch up. Gio Zambito, welcome. To, uh, happy. Good morning, everyone. And I'm glad you're here, too. Gio Zizip is here. And uh, Trav Desicle Keeper. <laughs> All these great names. I love them. North Carolina, one of the most beautiful states, certainly, in the United States. Hey, Denny, one other moderator. And uh, thank you, Denny, for being here and helping. Uh, her moderators help to uh, keep everything uh, acceptable, PC, and uh, we do get we do get young adults and uh, minors on my channel, so we like to keep it as clean as possible. Amon, hey Amon, my friend, haven't seen you in a while, and uh, you're closer to one of my sons right now than I am. He's over in England and uh, having a great time, loving it, absolutely loving it, uh, really shattering some of the misconceptions or preconceptions I might have had about London. He is absolutely loving London. And Frankie, good morning, Frankie. Fish Room Fever's here. And more folks are getting on. Boy, I love this name. Kajeld Slivist Overgaard from Denmark. What a wonderful name that is. And uh, you live in a beautiful country, I've heard. Hello to Bruce and William Gonzalez and Bruce, Le uh, Bruce Leroy. Hey, Blind Fish Kipper. Brandon is here. Brandon is the one who provided me with my little green tears, and they're all doing well. David C. is here from Chicago. I'd love some Chicago pizza. Boy, that's, that'd be good. Angelo, and in, the, and in the jeans. Need to buy Ben a new... <laughs> hey, come on, guys. I wasn't that late. <laughs> you guys are brutal. <laughs> all right. So... Um, if I missed you, good morning to you. And uh, can't get to everybody here, of course, so I'd spend all day shouting out names. But um, 
Let's go ahead and do the um, the official. I guess I call it the official start of the uh, of the live stream. If you're new to the channel and you like the content, if you think there's something here of value, please be sure to hit that um, the uh, like and the sub and the notification bell, and that will tell YouTube that something good is going on and encourage YouTube to put the channel in front of other fish keepers like you and me, and that way that's how the channel grows, and that's how you folks um, were able to uh, help me get up over 40,000, and that was that was amazing. I'm still kind of in shock about that, but but now we're, you know, we're, we've blown past 40 and we're on our way to 50, so it uh, just keeps growing, and it's because of you. So thank you for that. And... Uh, a quick shout out to the channel sponsor, which is the Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona. And uh, they provide a lot more than just cichlids. They're actually uh, getting into all kinds of fish there. And he's expanding into a brand new facility, much larger facility with lots of tubs and uh, breeding. He's going to be doing a lot of breeding. And um, so check out the Cichlid Shack and be sure to, to get a 10% discount on any order using Shack Attack 10 and uh, Shack Attack 15 on fish orders over $100 and uh, save you some money there and uh, for those of you who would like to support the channel uh, consider becoming a uh, patreon over there in the corner there's a little patreon logo uh, one of the one of the moderators can share the, the link to the patreon you can be a monthly patron <clears throat> excuse me for about three dollars a month and um, you'll get uh, pre-releases uh, videos you'll get content that is only for patreon members and you'll be part of the garage gang the uh, garage gang uh, t-shirt i have on and uh, also you can support the channel by using the amazon link to get to amazon and visit the store anything you buy on amazon using that link from my store or out of my store supports the channel with a small percentage and also uh, visit teespring for coffee cups mugs hoodies and things like that and use live stream for a 10 percent discount at checkout. Okay, that paid the bills, so let's go back. We don't need to see that video again. So, <clears throat> I did a survey, and uh, I wanted to find out what, what people thought were the worst and the best decisions they've made on uh, as a fish keeper. And, and uh, some of these were very interesting, and, and also... Um, can can open the door to some discussion, and so uh, I love doing that. I love doing these kind of things because they're really based. They're really based on on your comments, on what you had to say, and on real, you know, real world experience, not just something that we uh, we make up and then decide to do a video about it, which I don't do. So um, I'll just go ahead and go over these with you. I had quite a few responses, and. Uh, some of them are really uh, way, way too long. You could go to the uh, community, the uh, community page, the community page on YouTube uh, uh, affiliated with my channel, and you can read these answers. And um, <clears throat> so this uh, this reply here. Let's see here. Some of these you're going to expect. You're going to say, oh, yeah, been there, done that. And uh, starting plants and keeping discus has been the best. That's awesome. This individual says, starting plants and keeping discus has been the best. The worst was trying to keep a fall saltwater setup, including massive coral decorations, a half dozen crawfish, and various shrimp. I could see that. I could see that. I mean, discus certainly have uh, a certain amount of complexity, right, in keeping them. Some people recommend uh, UV sterilizers, uh, taking a lot of steps to make sure that their water is pristine. Temperatures have to be um, maintained, you know, higher than, let's say, in the low 80s. And uh, you can't really fluctuate from there. You have to keep it nice and warm for them. And uh, there are, there, you know, it, it, it requires pristine conditions. And... Um, but when you jump over into the keeping of corals where you have to dose certain kinds of minerals and uh, uh, in exact 
quantities with you know with equipment that is dropping a drop every every half hour or something or uh, too many there's so many moving parts and so much that can go wrong and and you can become polluted and kill off everything in just a matter of in, in you know in 24 hours things can go south very very quickly uh, they can go south in a freshwater tank but I think it, it's it's a bit more forgiving than a saltwater uh, certainly a tank with corals now, interestingly enough, the bigger the tank, the more forgiving, and that is certainly something I've discovered. Uh, folks figure, well, a starter tank, there's sort of a, a contradiction or a a, a bit of, it, it's just interesting that very often a starter tank is very, very small, but yet a small mistake in a, in a very small tank uh, can be very quickly devastating. So, um you know, you want to move up to a, a large tank as soon as you can. So let's take some more here. Worst decision, not quarantining my fish. I had to treat them for a good while and it paid off. Best decision I've made was buying my fish products in bulk. Medications and aquarium maintenance supplies on hand keeps my fish going and keeps my fish going and less of a chance of me buying more fish. So, <laughs> I'm not sure how that last part fits in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've, I've made, I've made mistakes. I, 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 I completely see where you're coming from. I've, I've had some problems that ar arose from that quarantine. I have also um, skipped that step and, and had it be okay. So it, it's it's a bit of a roll of the dice, you know. You roll the dice, and so, but you trust that local breeder, and you think it's okay. Or the fish in the tank where you got them from all looked healthy, uh, but in some cases, those tanks were sharing uh, a filtration system and sharing water, and so there was something in there that you didn't spot. And next thing you know, your tank is in very very bad shape. That happened to me. It brought in some um, cholomeris. I ended up losing 50% of my stock. Very, very bad situation because I rushed. I quarantined, but then I rushed it. I went faster than I normally go uh, because I thought a fish was being uh, picked on and needed to come out and go into the aquarium with comparable size fish. And so I pulled them early. And um, what I thought was tail damage due to being picked on was actually some tail uh, rot that was brought about by some of the some bacteria, uh, some very bad bacteria that that fish was carrying. And um, definitely, you know, keeping things uh, on hand and in tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's video, I'm going to talk about some things that I that I have here in the fish room. But uh, definitely keeping things on hand like medications and maintenance supplies, replacement uh, media, uh, water conditioners, things of this nature. Now, the only problem with medications in bulk, if you buy medications in bulk, is that they do expire. And I do believe that they lose some of their potency if if they're expired. So just watch watch for that. I had a very large um, container of General Cure, a very large container of General Cure I'd used maybe, I don't know, a fifth, maybe a couple treatments. And um, it was great to have because if you need to treat a tank like this, I mean, you're going to go through a tremendous amount of medication. I mean, 210 gallons, right? But, um, but you know, when you, you, you adjust it for, for decor, if you measure the size from the inside of the glass, you actually come up with a different number of gallons. And so, I, you know, you, you try and, and be as precise in your dosing. Don't overdose. Don't waste the medication. But at the same time, uh, it's good to have a, a large amount. But that container expired. I, I wanted to treat a fish that was in quarantine, and I looked at the label, and it was expired. So I just had to toss it, and that's expensive. I think the container cost me $100, maybe 100 bucks for, you know, just a large bulk of general cure. So um, just something to keep in mind because medications can sit for a very, very long time. This person said that their best decision was to buy high quality stuff instead of cheap alternatives. It opened a lot of possibilities in fish and plants keeping. Worst decision was to try those recommendations like do not gravel vac or no filter tank, etc. cetera. Um, for this person it was the best way to provide the fish and plants with an awful life. So um, yeah, interesting. 
Interesting. I, of course, I, of course, as you know, I mean, I like, I like to pick up stuff that will do the job, but isn't necessarily um, extremely expensive. I do have some expensive items, but I, I like to keep money in my pocket if I can, if I think that I'm going to get a, a comparable result that is not going to, that is not going to compromise the life of the fish. And so, um, you know, I, I, I did have a video one time and uh, the video was called never vacuum or don't vacuum. And that was just like the, the sort of the clickbait, right? But then when you get into the video, what I was suggesting was using, using power heads to sweep the gravel and move, move detritus into the intakes of filters. And, but in the video, I do admit that you still are from time to time going to have to vacuum because sometimes things accumulate, they get caught up. They get caught up under decor. They get caught up in places where the power heads simply can't flush them out. And so you still need to vacuum. You can't go completely without any vacuuming at all. And um, I know some folks out there, they see the, the no maintenance tank as sort of the holy grail. Um, let, let me get anaerobic bacteria to, to help consume nitrates. Let me get a full cycle going. Uh, let me add a lot of plants so the plants are doing the uh, the work and a cleanup crew. And I think the truth is you're, you're going to always have to do something because you have water that is sitting and not being replenished by rain. It's not being uh, it's not being fed by 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 streams or creeks. It's just a box of water. So something is always going to have to be done. <clears throat> now, I thought this one was. Uh, was a very good comment. This person said that the best thing was getting a betta fish after the loss of my dog. It helped give me a focus and someone to say hi to uh, five tanks later. Uh, so they got a little bit of the uh, multi-tank syndrome. But I've heard a lot from a lot of people over the years how fish keeping was um, helped them to recover. It had a certain kind of uh, uh, a medicinal you know, and I think there's even some research on uh, lowering uh, blood pressure, lowering heart rate, uh, calming the individual, changing brain waves. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that sitting in front of a tank uh, will do for a person uh, regarding health. And um, so I, I love I love hearing this kind of stuff. So this person lost, you lose a dog. I've lost several dogs over the years. I mean, they get old, they die. Beagles live about 14 years or so, you know, and, and I have, I've had to put a few of them. One of them uh, just passed away another, uh, a while back. I remember one just died at the home. Another one had to be put down because he was just broken down and old. And uh, it is, it's an emotional, uh, you know, punch in the, in the stomach. And um, I could see how, you know, getting something, getting something and, and, and being, you know, preoccupied, how that would help. I could totally see that. And, um, uh, Worse was setting up all my tanks with no actual uh, scaping in mind, just randomly adding things, and now all but one are a hot mess. And uh, yeah, you know, I I I love uh, scaping, and uh, yeah, you just don't want to throw stuff in. You want to think uh, think in in terms of something unusual, uh, something different. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. You can think in terms of thirds. You know, like putting something a third into the tank and having your heavy decorations there, uh, a third into the tank, and then leaving the rest open. Uh, this is a bit of a symmetrical setup with the left and right, um, and um, but I kind of like this big open area in the middle. By the way, here's the living stone eye. Look at him. He he's not all blue, so he's not all fired up and out to kill. And uh, this tank is still being very very peaceful. And if you saw my video on uh, Peace at Last. Look at this, uh, Johnson Eye. Last of the Chromis, Johnson Eye, beautiful fish. At any rate, I get distracted by my own fish. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going here. And I certainly want to hear your comments. What was the best and worst experience for you? I would definitely not... Uh, Here's a person who says, uh, I'm not sure what the best decision was, but I can tell you what the worst one was. Almost two years ago, I added 11 fish at one time to my tank, 
and that caused a bacteria bloom. And just two or three days later, I noticed my fish started getting white spots and rubbing their bodies on everything. They got ick, turned up the temperature in the tank and added API super ick cure, but that didn't help at all. I ended up losing almost all my fish. You have to learn from your mistakes. And I'll never add that many fish to my tank again at one time. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I've been there and um, we do sometimes too much. Uh, you add too many fish, you do too much maintenance at once, and you 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 start the tank. You know the the either the either the bacteria is trying to catch up and hasn't yet, but in trying to catch up, you get this this ammonia explosion, uh, an ammonia you, know, you get you get a spike in ammonia, and that is just devastating to the fish. I've had it happen to me. I had it happen. Those of you who remember my paratilapia pollini, paratilapia pollini, and that and and that uh, gold red spotted gold severum that I loved, uh, I, I did too much maintenance at once, I created uh, a you know sort of a mini cycle in the tank, a, a, a algae spike only lasted for a day or so, but that's all it takes. So um, if you ended up in a situation where you uh, had to do something like that. You can certainly add things like, um, like your Fritz, uh, you know, your, your Fritz Zyme Seven. You can bring over media from established tanks. You can uh, treat the water every day for two weeks, right? Uh, you know, just 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 keep hitting it with something like a Prime or or uh, Safe, something like that. I mean, there are ways to safeguard. And now, in hindsight. Uh, I, I learned a very hard lesson. Losing that uh, Paratilapia uh, pollini was very hard. I loved that fish. He was beautiful. I, in my mind, I was anticipating how he was going to look when he was when he was much larger. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, man, I feel you. Okay. So, um, here's a person who says the best decision was during the Houston winter storm. Uh, do you remember that one? I think IFG, Evan Alexander, put out a video on a fish store that had no no backup, no power backup, and they were out of power for three or four days, lost almost all their stock. I mean, it was horrible. Uh, that was in Houston. And by the way, if we lose power here, my son-in-law came over because they lost all their power. And uh, if I lose power, if I'm not back on in five minutes, that means that the live stream is over. So if we do have a power outage, and for, you know, I'm, fingers crossed we didn't have one last night. But my son-in-law had to come over because they had no power at their house. So um, best decision was during the Houston winter storm in February, uh, out of power for almost five days. So I stopped feeding, and I wrapped my tanks in blankets. Discus, tetras, shellies, etc. survived. Only two guppies died. Now that's interesting. Very, very interesting. Especially the stop feeding. Uh, and that that kind of ties into that comment about you know nitrate control. How can I control my nitrates? Well, one way you control your nitrates, of course, is to cut back on how much you're feeding. The flip side of that, especially if you have fish like these, is that uh, they can get pretty ornery and when they're hungry. And one of the ways that people help to control aggression in cichlid tanks is to keep the fish well fed. So um, he stopped feeding, and of course that that helped to stop any kind of, uh, you know, jump or extreme increase in, in uh, unfiltered waste, which would pick up the, the uh, nitrate, right? The ammonia and the nitrates. And he wrapped them in blankets. And it worked. Now, that's not something I would have I thought of. So, you know, kudos. That's amazing. This person says that their worst decision was mixing haps, mabuna, and peacocks. And um, he says improper numbers. I'm not really sure what that means, but best decision was setting up four 75-gallon and one 125 single-species heavy stock mabuna tanks. Got all the colors uh, just side by side. It only took two years, over two years to accomplish. So what we're talking about here is the mixing of fish that uh, in this person's estimate, uh, I, you know, in this person's mind, should not have been put together. And we see that sometimes. And 
For every time you talk about that subject, someone's going to come up and say, well, you know, I've got them living together, blah, blah, blah. And, and I get it. And this is not a knock on that person. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that it works until it doesn't work. And very early on, I had peacocks mixed with Mabuna and, and uh, it worked until it didn't work. And the Mabuna put on size, became very protective of large sections of the tank, and um, were keeping the peacocks under a very high stress. You, would, you wouldn't think that they would dominate, but they do. The Mabuna are very tough, very tough and very territorial. And uh, boy, they had those peacocks on the run. And then I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. Do I... Do I um, go with Mabuna? Do I do I set up a couple tanks? And and I ended up just concentrating, as you know, on peacocks and haps. So the mixing of fish and uh, actually separating it out so that you don't have to. Well, here's another person that says that the best decision they ever made was learning basic water chemistry and the nitrogen process early on from excellent books before the internet or e and so this person did it the, the old school way the worst was keeping the wrong or incompatible fish so here we hear that again wrong or incompatible fish together with very unsuccessful results there's a uh, there's an article and it's called uh, basic water chemistry it's available at uh, cichlid-forum, and I think it's just cichlid-forum.com. So cichlid and then a dash forum.com. And it's called Basic Water Chemistry. Great article. I think it's one or two pages written in simple language. And I really recommend that article to anybody that is interested. I had a few comments like this one where... Uh, <laughs> The best and the worst were together. Uh, best decision, buying two giant gouramis. Worst decision, buying two giant gouramis. So the people that have a love-hate relationship, you know, it's like, well, now I'm stuck with these two giant gouramis. I love them like puppy dogs, but, uh, you know, here I am, so. By the way, I don't know if Paul is on the stream today, but Paul, thank you so much. I got a very nice Christmas card from uh, Paul over in the UK, and he sent me a copy of the United Kingdom Practical Fishkeeping magazine. You can see it here. Beautiful magazine. Has uh, a lot of uh, information on both salt and fresh, and a beautiful section on, on scaping an aquarium, and also a... Uh, a a guide, a picture guide to, you can see here some of the, uh, some of the scaping. They had a contest, I guess, like an international contest. I don't know if you can see this with the glare, but you can see some of the beautiful examples of, uh, those are scaped aquariums. They look like, uh, like fantasy forests, you know, magical forests. And uh, they were ranked they were ranked in the world from 16 to number one. And then there's a, a, a beautiful section, uh, a, a guide on, um, on epistogrammas. And it's just like five or six pages of, of pictures of epistos. And uh, let's turn this page here. really makes me tempted to get into these fish. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So you have this photo guide. So if you're going to go out and buy some, you can identify them. And uh, at any rate, thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate that. All the way from the UK. From the UK. I know it wasn't cheap to send me that. Postal services are out of control. Okay. So let's see here. Someone, uh, someone shared just the best decision, which was making fish keeping my hobby. Yes, we all know the hobby is very expensive, but the rewards of fish keeping are worth it. I agree. I agree. 
worse overstocking my tanks best buying a 125. I'll tell you, I love large tanks, you know, and, and uh, in California, I had a 150. Love that tank. Very deep, kind of like the 300 that I have coming. It's 30, 33 inches deep from front to back, right? You know, you get this sort of deep scape, you know, where they're turning around and just love, love uh, big tanks. Worse, this person says the worst was buying piranhas. Wasn't a great idea and a, a bad experience. Best was keeping African cichlids. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how um, keeping piranhas could end well. And uh, I happen to, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'd be a little reluctant to keep like a wolf or or a jaguar cichlid. You know, something that can take the tip off your finger uh, would be anything like that. Is uh... all right. Let's see. Worst decision, spending hundreds on ceramic biological media before coming to understand that 30 PPI, parts, I guess that's uh, the per inch foam, is the best biomedia one can get. Interesting. Someone that believes that, that sponges are the best biomedia. And I've, you know, I've been leaning kind of in that direction. You know that if you follow the channel. I've, I've been moving in the direction of, of relying on sponges and certainly in the sump below this tank, and look at these fish and look at this aquarium. I mean, what I have is primary uh, Lethronops oculatus. Just a beautiful fish. Anyway, uh, again, I'm distracted by my own fish. So this person is not big on ceramic and is instead using, now using foam. Best, finding channels like this, which helped me quite a lot when first getting into the hobby. And uh, I, I'm with you. You know, we're kind of evolving the same way. And I'll tell you, I, I, I am so grateful that I bumped into uh, IFG and uh, uh, Adam C. and uh, John and Lisa and uh, Jason and oh, you know, at prime time aqua all these great fish keepers, right? Darius and uh, so many great YouTubers out there. And boy, I was just obsessed with YouTube videos before I picked up that first sixty-gallon aquarium in California. Uh, that was the first larger tank that I picked up, and it, it just really helped. Now, granted, you got to take everything you hear with a grain of salt, and everything you hear, you have to verify on your own. You are on your own. You don't. You know, you can't just take it all as 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 uh, gospel. And this person says that the worst decision for me was getting more tanks than I really had the time to maintain. I went from one to six tanks in just a few months, ranging from 55 to 125 gallons. It's a lot of work. Rewarding, but a lot of work. Love them all. Best decision we made was moving our African cichlids up to a 125 and adding in many more, which lowered aggression issues that we were having with our peacock, with our peacock tank boss. It was like a miracle pill. So this is a person who used heavy stocking to help uh, control aggression. I, I, again, this tank has gone into a state of peace, and it could use more fish. The uh, autopharynx tetrastigma has become, at least temporarily, the boss. I've seen that happen before. But we'll see if that remains the case, especially when fish like, like this venusus here and, uh, you know, put on size. Uh, I mean, how long can it last, really? But the autopharynx tetrastigma will chase that that living stone eye around and is keeping him spotted. In other words, out of like that fired up breeding dress. And as long as he's not all blue, uh, he's okay. He he kind of hangs around and and does that kind of stuff. And so this person is using uh, heavy stalking, and definitely, you know, I. I talked about that in that video on uh, burnout. How when you you, you you know you you you, do, you get too much, you get you get too much, and uh, it it starts being work. Every day of the week, you got stuff to do. Now, if you're if you're um, 
you know, if you're Josh Cunningham or, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're James Largo with the sickle check, you know, and you love fish and it's turned into a job. It's turned into a business. Yeah. Yeah. You're a small business owner. You're going to put in long hours and that's how you, you know, that's, that's how you make your living. But for a hobbyist, someone who uh, uses aquariums as a, a means for relaxing, uh, getting too many and too much too fast, you're, you, it starts becoming work and stress. And, and so that's one of the things I talk about in that video on burnout. I talk about how you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. All right. This person talks about keeping fish that they like was the best decision, like fancy goldfish. And, and the worst decision was fish that were like in fashion. You see that happen every now and then. And this isn't a knock on uh, flower horns, but you see like all of a sudden flower horns, like, oh man, you see a lot of videos about flower horns. People run out and buy flower horns. And that, that fish can be that that fish can be tough. They're very expensive. They can they can live they can only live alone. I mean they're very, very hard or impossible on tank mates. And they're like a, a hybrid kind of nightmare that way. But uh, not chasing what they see on the internet. Worst decision for this person was not doing enough research on specific fish before purchasing. Best decision being making the jump to keep African cichlids and keeping the aquarium as healthy as possible. When we put in the work, our fish thrive. Boy, there's a, is that true or what, right? You got to do the work. I've said that many times. And, um, and boy, research. Research and patience are probably two key words in fish keeping. Research and patience. I mean, these, these, these fish are like, I mean, they're like candy. I mean, you go to, you, you go to a store and you, it's very easy to get into an impulse purchase. Okay. I'm going to buy that, take it home. And, um, and then after you take them home, you do a little bit of Google research, right? And you find out, uh Oh, I've got a fish that's going to get to, uh, you know, 25 inches and I've got them in a you know 75 gallon tank and I'm in trouble here. And, uh, I can only imagine how many people have bought arowanas or red tail catfish, uh, things like this, right? Even Oscars, plecos, and you see them. You go to the local fish store and you see fish. And in my last walkthrough, where I went, where I returned that dragon blood to uh, aquatic critters, I showed several fish that were obviously fish that had been brought into the to the store. And uh, to a, to aquatic critters' credit, they go ahead and take them. And more or less at that point become a bit of a rescue service because it's very hard to sell, you know, a, a 17 inch green pleco. But. Um, so, yeah, research, research, research. And uh, I've made that mistake. Bring the fish home and uh, pay the price. Find out it's incompatible. Find out that it's not uh, something I should have bought. So let's take a look what you have to say, what you've been saying here on the comments. I have not been looking at the comments. It looks like somebody gave me a, uh, let's see here. Somebody came in with a super chat and I missed them. Let's take a look here. I wasn't even looking at the comments because if I look at the chat, I get distracted. And peas and haps forever. Thank you so much for that super chat, my friend. And uh, David C. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate that. The super chat. Super chats are just a way to throw a little dough at the channel. Always appreciate it. I thank you for that. Emin says that the best thing, always be learning. Worse, never assume you know. 
Uh, boy, is that, there's some wisdom there. The um, one of my favorite sayings is the there's there's one thing worse than um, there's one thing worse than not knowing, and it's not knowing but thinking you know. <laughs> you know, I'd rather have um, an airplane pilot that knows that they're not familiar with something than a pilot who thinks they they are when they're not and. <laughs> Frankie, I don't know if I can go two hours. At the end of one hour, I have no voice. I'm, I'm a bit hoarse. Frankie is asking if I should go two hours. And uh, no, I, it, it's, uh, that would be a little bit too long. And uh, so let's see what else you have to say here. Peas and haps forever. I just don't get flower horns. Yeah, they kind of remind me of uh, like Pinky and the Brain. You know, you got this fish with this massive brain, and I, and 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 I know it's just a what do they call it a a, a conch or a nuchal? I forget what they call that hump on there, but uh, it's not brain; it's just fatty tissue. And uh, they are pretty smart, though. I've seen people who train their flower horns to do tricks like flips and stuff like that. And they are, you know, I've, when they're small, I think they're kind of cute. And I think the female flower horns who don't get that massive hump, I think that they're, that's a very beautiful fish. But um, boy, talk about uh, a fish that lacks social skills. So, if I'm going to change or move into anything, it's going to be into fish that are uh, less aggressive than African cichlids. So I want to reduce the stress in my life, not increase it. So. So uh, this is why I'm seriously looking at planted tanks. I've got some um, lemon tetras with some cardinals and some embers in a 29 gallon right now with a bunch of plants that I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing some projects with. And so that would be the direction I would prefer to go in. M and C Aquatics. I've got to move my dovi fry. You have dovi fry. Wow. I mean dovi. That's another fish that uh, you got to watch your fingers. I'm I'm going through the chat here. Hang in there as I scan. If I miss your comment, please don't be upset with me. Peas and haps forever. I have 23 peacocks and haps in my 125, and I'm adding five more. Now, you know, you add five more. Uh, you probably have enough beneficial bacteria in a tank that size to go ahead and support and catch up, you might want to consider, maybe you're already doing this, uh, maybe add a little bit of water conditioner for two or three days just to just to offset, you know, a little bit of an ammonia spike that might occur, you know, just to be a little careful. I've become a little bit conservative. Uh, Carrie Gold just got my first big tank, a 75-gallon. 75, 75 gallons, uh, Carrie, are... are uh, are deceptively large. I mean, you you stand next to them. I used to do uh, live streams in front of a 60-gallon, and I used to do it at an angle, and people used to, oh, my goodness, that tank is enormous, blah, 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 blah. And uh, But they are they are deceptively large. I mean, when, when, you've, when you've been in front of a tank like this for a while, uh, you get a little bit spoiled, and a, a, a 75 or a 55 might look small or feel small. But, um, no, 75 is a great size. Great size, a lot of lot of flexibility, a lot of things you can do with it. You could certainly put some uh, peacocks and haps in there, and they would be very happy uh, until they got into you know maximum size. Frankie says that Sun Sun three thousands are on eBay for one hundred and forty three dollars. Is that a good deal? I don't know. I haven't priced Sun Suns for a while. I do have a uh, I do have a Sun Sun seven hundred four B that I keep as backup. And uh, you'll see me talking about that tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video is a Christmas list for fish keepers. And uh, not sure if all of you celebrate Christmas, but uh, certainly if you're going to be gift giving or want to put together a birthday list, I have a list of items in Sunday's video that I think everybody should have. Uh, Dave C., yeah, 
Yeah, Dave C. Uh, eBay. I picked up Sun Suns on eBay. Wow. My beautiful little female Oscar just got killed by a female peacock. And when you think of those fish, you would think that an Oscar would be much tougher. But if they're smaller, they're at a big disadvantage. And peacocks, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, Lisa, this is Lisa from Lisa Foster. I'll tell you, peacocks can be really, really rough. And I, I got a shipment from uh, James over at the Cichlichak, and it was mostly peacocks. Though That was the toughest meanest group of fish I ever got. The hap shipment that followed several months later was much more peaceful. And I don't know. I mean, it really kind of changed my mind. I had this idea that peacocks were were the gentler of the... No, they're not. They're not. And I've heard that Victorian, Lake Victoria, cichlids are even, are even more ornery. The blind fish keeper I keep almost... Only nothing but sponge as my filter media for all my tanks. Love sponges. Yeah, I'll tell you, it is the most underrated. And for some reason, it, it, it got the rep reputation of being mechanical when uh, the truth is it is, um, it is a very good biological media. If you go to Swiss Tropicals, Swiss Tropicals. I, I think he's got some good information there. And if you have questions, you can you can ask him. He's a he's got a doctorate degree, knows what he's talking about. The owner of Swiss Tropicals, and he sells matten, right? Pour it and mat, matten sponges. And I've got a big three inch thick one that stands up. It's uh you know it's about this big, three inches thick, and it it's just standing in in the in the sump below the below the two ten, with two very stiff hard. Uh, sp sponges from Bulk Reef Supply providing walls that keep it standing and uh, I'm getting good results I mean what can I say here's the auto pharynx tetrastigma who temporarily is the tank boss acting all fired up one of my favorite definitely one of my favorite cichlids and perhaps the cichlid that gets the most comments on my videos Peas and Haps Forever, one of the best moves I've made was switching my biomedia to pot scrubbers. So cheap and work fantastic. I've heard a lot of things about pot scrubbers. Just make sure you don't buy the ones that have any kind of soap or detergent in them. Just plain pot scrubbers. Sabharath? Sabharath? Manny Vasagan, Sabharat Manny Vasagan. I hope I didn't butcher that name too bad. One of my fish in quarantine, a lemon Jake, lost his eye in a fight. I treated treated him with Melifix. Now he is eating and all healthy, but looks like a zombie with one eye. Should I keep him all alone in a thirty? Tough call, man. Tough call. I had a uh, Malawi gar that lost an eye. And he would only swim in the direction of his good eye. He would only see food that was on the side of his good eye. Um, would get attacked from his blind side. It's tough. So it's your call. Your call. I ended up giving him to uh, to a fish store in California. And uh, they took him gladly. And I'm assuming he's continuing to live his life there. But all he had was just a hole. Just a hole where an eye used to be. He lost the entire eye. And uh, so I don't know. That's a tough call. If you keep them, you probably have to put them in a, you know, put them in a 40 gallon breeder uh, and just, you know, let them live out his life. Or there might be someone out there who will go ahead and uh, go ahead and adopt him. GP um, says that a 304, Sun Sun 304 can be purchased for less than 100. Yeah, I had I had two three hundred two Bs running on a sixty gallon in California, and they kept that tank rock solid. Never made a noise. I'd have to touch them, you know, to make sure they were on. They're so quiet. And uh, I know there's horror stories about Sun Suns, but I had I've had a good experience with them. I really learned about them. I learned the importance of making sure that you didn't overstuff the baskets, otherwise that it would rattle. Uh, I would keep it on a pad so that would neutralize some of the vibration. 
and um, I wouldn't over tighten, but I would tighten enough so there's no leaks, you know, any of the uh, connections. And I would keep the O-ring, the O-rings uh, in good shape. Uh, lubricate them once a year with some um, food grade silicone. I'm going to show you some of that food grade silicone in tomorrow's video. Uh, I talk about O-rings and the lubricating of O-rings. All right. So, any more any more questions? Go ahead and put them in the chat right now. And did I miss any more super chats? If I did, I'm sorry. I'm flying through the flying through here. Let's see here. GP says you do not get rid of a one-eyed fish. You get them an eye patch and promote them to captain. And uh, I matey. All right. So one of the things I love, and Amber Key, uh, one of the things I love about uh, the live stream is how you folks do get into conversations with each other and help each other out. And I uh, just love it. I just love the fact that you do that. You do that. And uh, and Cat Sailor, excellent advice, just what I was looking for. Yeah, it gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction to know that you folks are actually helping each other out, and uh, that this is a, a live stream that you can come to and get some assistance that is worthwhile. I know there are live streams out there that um, that are just chit-chat, and they talk about uh, sports and chewing tobacco and uh, whatever's on their mind. And I really like to keep this one, I like to keep this one just, just to fish, and uh, and really keep that as the focus of it, and not. Well, I mean, uh, sometimes I'll keep you an update on my family, on the weather, on living in Nashville, on my kids. Can't help but talk about my kids and my grandchild. But uh, I like to keep it on point. On point. Hello, Dan from California. I hope uh, things are good out there for you. I miss it sometimes, but not not really. Not as much as I thought I would. And. Uh, all right. I'm scanning the, uh, I'm still scanning the, the chat here. Even though it doesn't move on your screen, it's, I'm, cha I, I'm scanning it. Kyle O'Brien, how did you get your wife to let you turn your garage into that? <laughs> um, well, you know, I have a background in sales and negotiation. <laughs> I'm blessed. I really am blessed. I have a wife that is uh, supportive, supportive of what I do. And um, she, um, when we were looking for a house here in Tennessee, we wanted to find a house that had a room that could be dedicated to fish keeping. What we ended up in is a house that has beautiful hardwood floors on the first floor, and then on the second floor is carpeted, and the second floor really is not going to be able to support this kind of weight. So on our checklist of what we were looking for in a house, cul-de-sac, wood-burning fireplace, <laughs> three or four bedrooms uh, we wanted, but there had to be a fish room. And so... This was this was the compromise, was that the garage would be would be mine. It is serving currently double duty. It has some storage items in here uh, that are out of view. They're not on camera. It is a big garage. Has a very high, I don't know, twenty foot ceiling, and um, so it wasn't that bad. Now, back in California, I would have to I, I would have to give and take. So I would do some massive chore, something on the honeydew list, right? So I would paint the living room. And after it was painted and perfect, then I'd be able to bring in a tank or do some, some other massive chore. And we would negotiate. We'd go, okay, look, if you saw my videos back in California, I had uh, the 150 gallon was in the bedroom, the uh, 
I had a, a, a 100 and a 60 in the living room and a 29. And uh, so the, the tanks were spread out, you know, and but every tank was put in place following a bit of negotiation, give and take. Now I have an area that is entirely mine. My wife is actually encouraging me to get a storage, rent storage, and move the things that we have in storage out of the garage so I can incorporate, use all of the space, which uh, might be something I'll end up doing. If I end up having racks of tanks, I'll need to do that. And uh, But at any rate, I uh, negotiate. There has to be something that your spouse wants. Uh, offer it, negotiate, and uh, and maybe they'll give in. <laughs> now, also that being said, once the channel started to become self-sustaining, and by that what I mean is with your help, by becoming Patreons, by super chatting, uh, by liking the videos, by subscribing, uh, and it creates you know creates revenue. And so now the channel is self-sustaining, so it doesn't it doesn't create a financial drain on the family, and that helps a lot. That helps a lot. Before that started, and uh, it was a difficult conversation to get into. Hey, look, there's a tank. I found a tank. I think I want to get it. It's uh, you know a hundred and something gallons. It's gonna be five hundred dollars. It includes the filter, blah, 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 blah. And all that's kind of going over her head because she doesn't really know. All she all she sees is $500 in grocery uh, money is now going to be going into a tank. <laughs> so anyway. Now, my wife does not. Uh, Edgar Rivera, I'm in a cold war, so my wife hates my aquarium. <laughs> but I often catch her enjoying them. So see, she's pretending to hate them. Because she doesn't want you to spend money, but secretly she's a she's a closet fish lover, and I've seen that before. <laughs> Everybody in my family loves my tanks, and uh, when I brought my, you know, my month and a half old granddaughter down here, she went crazy looking at the fish. It was absolutely adorable, and uh, my wife will come down when I get new fish, and she'll come down and look at them, and and uh, and I think I think they enjoy. How much I enjoy it, right? Because you know, here's old Ben retired and and uh, you know living in the garage and <laughs> let's keep him occupied so he doesn't get you know doesn't get in trouble. <laughs> so I think they get a kick out of how much I enjoy fish keeping, which I really truly do. It gives me a tremendous amount of joy. Even the work, even the work, I find that so satisfying and relaxing to finish doing a major maintenance or getting a tank like this set up, uh, you know, get the plumbing done and get it, get it. So it's functioning and able to sustain life. Uh, to me, that, that is so therapeutic, so therapeutic. And I just love it. And uh, they get a joy out of the joy that I get out of it. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I have a supportive family. So, um, uh, uh, Frankie, my wife hates pets. <laughs> I tell you, I, I appreciate how much I'm blessed. <laughs> All right. So the um, the video tomorrow is what everyone should have on their Christmas list. Um, and uh, and I you know, and I know that some of you out there are gonna end up just buying buying yourself a fish related christmas present so uh so use you know use tomorrow's uh video for some ideas <laughs> and uh that's it for me and uh let me just give a final welcome to some of the latecomers here misfit reptiles and aquatics hello my friend glad you made it and phil hair and uh, dan coat m and c aquatics and uh, let me see, Fra Frankie came, of course, Fra Frankie Fingers, Frankie Fingers, sounds like a mafia name, of course, and let's see, Shannon King, hello, Shannon, Shannon, curious, how do you heat a bigger tank? Uh, yes, get two heaters, Shannon, and put them into a controller, buy yourself a controller, you can get them at Gemco, you can buy one at Gemco, this is going to sound expensive. It's about a hundred bucks. 
and they'll give you one with two plugs. It's built like a battleship. It's a very heavy duty, uh, or you can go on the cheap and pick up uh, pick up something like an Inkbird. Just be sure you buy the one with the black sensor that goes into the tank. And this way, if your heaters go crazy, you can uh, it shuts off the electricity once you hit the desired temperature, and it will not let your heaters overheat your fish. But yeah, so look, go five watts. In California, you can go three watts because it just doesn't get that cold there. But here, five watts per gallon, and that's how much wattage you're going to need. So I've got, I've got an eight hundred watt, eight hundred watt heater from Heiger in the corner of this tank, hidden in the corner. It's all black, so it's perfect uh, against the black background. You can barely see it, and it's behind some plants. And I've got a lot of circulation going, so the heated water gets circulated. Then in the sump, I have a 200-watt titanium, uh, ti a very small 200-watt titanium from, uh, also from Heiger. And uh, so between those two, the water is getting heated, and both of them are plugged into a very heavy-duty uh, Gemco. Uh, and I don't know, one of the moderators can put a link to Gemco.com. Uh, it's, it's an old-school pet supply place, and... and uh, now, I also have these. Uh, the, I also have the the uh, the controllers that I have on the fifty fives. You can get those from um, from my friend James over at the Aquarium Co op, and those have worked really, really good, and uh, I, I love them. And but definitely, definitely put a controller so that you don't so that you don't uh, boil your fish. But yeah, two heaters that'll help you to spread out, so you don't have hot and cold zones. Plus, with the water, a lot of circulation. Uh, you, you'll get uh, a nice even temperature. And uh, and plus, if you ever need to raise your temperature, let's say you see ick, you want to take your, your, your tank slowly up to 85, 86, 87 degrees, right? And so you can use that controller to kind of inch things up a bit. So I set my, I set my heaters to about 85. I set the controller to about 80, 82. So that if I needed to raise the temperature, all I do is hit the up button on my controller a couple times, and then it lets the tank heat up a little bit. So, but uh, the rule of thumb seems to be five watts uh, per gallon. Five watts per gallon. Let me see if there's any any last minute. Any other questions that I should pick up here? I think we got into a pretty good discussion on uh, husband and wives. <laughs> Sebos359 from New Zealand. Hello, my friend. Loves the Bolivian Rams. Carrie Gold looking up best beginner, medium-sized American cichlids. American say okay, so much info out there. If you folks have some uh, advice for Kerrygold and uh, looking for some medium-sized cichlids, I'll tell you, I love geos. Boy, I love geos. Such fun fish. Now, they're going to be around the bottom of your tank, so you're, you're going to probably want something to be more around the middle. But um, I just love geos. Now, the surprisingly, uh, a surprise to me was how how vicious the Surrey Menenses were with each other. But the uh, red top, the the uh, red top Tapajos, they're not, they're not really, uh, not really bothering each other. Frankie talks about your electric bill. My electric, my electric bill is not bad. You know, one of the reasons we moved to Tennessee is the price of utility. Our, our utility price here compared to California is, and we have more square footage. We have two large dual heating cooling systems that that separately heat and cool the first and second floor. Uh, we have, of course, a large furnace and uh, a heating system. I think in the attic, there's a large heating system up there. And uh, our bill is probably a third what it was in California. A third. Probably a third. So... Uh, I'm very happy, very happy we made this move when it comes to the cost of utilities. Gas, uh, automobile gas, I can find it for under $3 a gallon right now here in Tennessee. 
under $3 a gallon. When we first moved here, it was under $2 a gallon. But in California, I heard in Northern California, there's $5, 6 $7 a gallon. So, um, yeah, the cost of living here is one of the main reasons that we came here. Uh, Carrie Pitt comes in with a super chat. Thank you, Carrie. I really appreciate that. And Amber Key. Thank you so much, Amber, for that super chat. Your support is awesome. Helps to pay me, uh, cover things like gas, equipment, uh, you know, trips out to uh, places like Glass Cages. About 60 miles round trip to Glass Cages. About 60 miles round trip to uh, the Aquatic Critter. By the way, I filmed at Glass Cages the making of an aquarium. I'll be sharing that probably next week. I really got to sit down and spend some time and edit all the footage, as well as some uh, shots that were sent to me by uh, Joe, the co-owner of Glass Cages here in uh, in Dixon, Tennessee. So um, watch for that from raw, from glass, from just sheets of glass to the finished aquarium. They're, uh, they're using, I think it's called Starfire. Starfire glass, it's it's a it's a um, low iron glass, beautiful glass, beautiful glass, and they're going to be shifting entirely over to that kind of glass, uh, and uh, so watch for that video. That video will be coming out within the next week or so. Now, a question for you. A quick question. Do you um, do you want a live stream on New Year's Day. New Year's Day is Saturday. I'm not going to do one on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, you sleep in late, open a few presents, have a little hot cocoa, right? You don't want to be listening to Ben. But how about New Year's Day? Do you guys want a live stream on New Year's Day? And if so, if I can arrange it and I can get some people to participate, would you want... Um, would you want to do maybe a few giveaways on New Year's Day? Maybe I can get a few sponsors to uh, throw some stuff into the pot, maybe give away some stuff, start the year off with. I mean, giveaways are kind of, I don't know, they're, they're kind of uh, gimmicky in some ways, maybe a little clickbaity, I don't know, but maybe give away a little stuff. But do you want, do you want a live stream on New Year's Day? You tell me. And uh, by the way, Kerry Gold, is that your name? Uh, we, we, we are absolutely obsessed here with Kerry Gold Butter. We use Kerry Gold Butter, and I can't help but think of uh, Kerry Gold Butter when I see your name. So. <laughs> so, yes, you'd like to see a live stream on New Year's Day. You would be there. Okay, Rob. Rob's Aquarium says, uh, sound good. Okay. Yeah, you just post, your, post your comments, and I'm going to do a survey on YouTube as well. All right. So with that being said, and I hope I didn't miss any super chats. If I did, I'm sorry. And if I missed your question, I'm sorry. I try and get to as many as I can, but I'm, uh, I can only move so fast. <laughs> And carries and covers so much. But uh, I want to thank all of you for taking some of your Saturday and spending it with me. And uh, thank you to my wonderful moderators. Thank you to the uh, channel sponsor, uh, Cichlid Check. Thank you so much for your help, James. James is feeling a lot better, and I am so, so happy about it. And uh, Stephen says, my Salvini won't stop chasing my green tear. They're both seven inches. That's funny you say that because I was thinking about going back to the uh, aquatic critter and picking up one of their small Salvinis. I don't know. I just don't know. Salvinis. Beautiful fish. But I don't want, I don't want, I don't know. Like I said, I want to go in the direction. They do have a Juropari, Juropari Geo, Geophagus, Geopari. Look beautiful. And I think I might want to pick up one of those. So uh, at any rate, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And I'm 13 minutes over, and uh, I think that's it for me. You are the best. You truly do rock. I say that. I mean it. And I think with that, thank you, moderators, GP, Denny, and everybody else that moderated. Thank you for your help. 
Thank you, Super Chatters. And that's it for me. And uh, goodbye for now. See you next Saturday. Check out tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.